Hello my soccer universe. Uh, today did not exactly go as I envisioned it. Um, I had all the highlights watched. I watched yesterday Germany Spain. We'll talk about it in a sec. I knew I had to bring Toto to the doctor but then I tried to figure out my persistent Wi-Fi problems in my studio office however you like and this took the entire uh, day so I know I will not post <laughs> the Thursday results on Friday, but I ever pack Thursday and Friday in one video and you'll get this Saturday morning. So this is part one of what we're going to have. One thing I learned is um, now the problems are not yet fixed, but whatever your internet provider is giving you is usually overpriced and not of that good quality. You usually can find better stuff in other places. That's what I learned today, so I want to pass that on. I'm wearing Ukraine, as you will see. Oh, you already see Ukraine has a win, but let's first talk about Germany, Spain, um, which to me was the biggest fixture of this. Uh, maybe, yeah, from the names, you know, World Cup winner 2010 at the World Cup winner of 2014. In the early late uh, 2000s, early 2010s, this was the the two European nations that were never actually meeting all that much, except for a Euro final and a World Cup semi final. But Germany really always tried to beat Spain, never got there. And then when they actually were ready to Spain was falling away so kind of it was never to be and since then it were kind of so and so friendless the game yesterday you could see that in the renewing renewal process I mean both sides feel it rather um, I don't want to say squads of unknown but definitely there is a big break and big renewal happening so um, uh, younger teams lots of new players in there trying out stuff also due to the Champions League and now um, certain players have to be uh, you know the Bayern players were and were playing and uh, many other players as well uh, it was interesting also it was played in Stuttgart uh, where Jogi Löw had his first real coaching experience so uh, that I found uh, rather interesting but yeah the game itself uh, it was not a bad game but you could see that uh, both teams are not really gelling yet um, I think the biggest chance in the first I mean uh, Germany had more of the game uh, and had more and more, more chance but there was always like a pass or something a little bit too much but the biggest chance was to Rodrigo, who suddenly is in a one-on-one -on -one at around Trapp, who flies by him. He just needs to put the foot on the ball and aim for the empty net. But now he takes another touch, wants to take another touch, and the ball is away. This is something that is uh, galling. And I think Rodrigo had a really bad, bad day over, over because there were a few times he was just looking for the extra pass or the extra move instead of just going for goal. Sorry Leeds United fans, I think the player that they get is very talented, but needs a lot of coaching. Uh, so yeah, I think Germany, at least for the first, you know, it took about 10 minutes until the game got, got going then. Uh, up until minute 30, I definitely thought that Germany have, was the better of the two teams. Uh, Spain then came up a little bit early in the second half. Um, Robin Golson assisted Werner, who just makes a move, and uh, it was really nice to see how the entire uh, German attack confused the Spanish uh, defense enough that, for instance, with a little run, um, Lior Sane could uh, just confuse uh, Ram. Ram was enough that allowed Timo Werner that extra touch where he can pull it into the net, and it's 1 0 Germany. And then I was actually surprised to see Germany a little bit falling back and Spain actually having a lots of possession, but not much penetration. It needed a while and it needed to get going for long. Um, in fact, I thought from a counterattack that probably um, Germany will make it 2-0, but that never happened. Um, of course, Ansu Fati came on for Jesus Navas, kind of the... It was an uh, you know seventy year old for a thirty four year year old. This was kind of the changing of the guard, and then when Busquets came, on, it was really very very young players on there. It was not until, you know then Spain I think had um, one chance uh, late in the second, but it wasn't until stoppage time, and I thought Ansu Fati had scored, but there was a foul there I think by Sergio Ramos. Um, and basically with the last kick of the, of, of, of the game, uh, Spain was helped that Gossens, 
who tried to defend the cross uh, fell outside of the box and remember that goal from Lavanisro against Italy, the 1-0 in 2008? Uh, there were also a defender outside the box and that means there's no offside anymore and Gaia could use that to uh, slot it home. 1-1, one, one, I have to say probably a just result, although I thought Germany was slightly better. So if there was a German victory, it wouldn't have been undeserved. But Germany again cannot win in the Nations League. This is the uh, now meanwhile fifth game in the Nations League. They have not had a single win. Yes, they play on only against big opponents, but that must be a little bit concerning. Uh, in the other game between Ukraine and Switzerland, Ukraine bossed the first half and had many chances. Took the lead through Jarm Yarmolenko, but a really nice shot by Seferovic gave, the, uh, gave Switzerland an equalizer late in the first half. Switzerland then came out a little bit better, and can I say that I really don't like the current Switzerland look? I mean, with the red and the darker red, it just looks weird. I mean, if this was white, I think I could get more on board with it than this all red. It does not look very Swiss. I know they need to get more exciting jerseys. I think Switzerland home jerseys are some of the safest ever. I think the first time I saw Switzerland was in 91 when they played Austria, and then they had a really crazy shirt. But ever since, Swiss jerseys are rather on the boring side, except the one that's hanging up there, the away jersey from 2016. That, that was great. Um, but you know, all the pressure that Switzerland brought didn't come from Russia and Sinjenko, um, you know, Ukraine got themselves back, Sinjenko with a wonderful goal, and then uh, re reminiscing, I think it was their. Um, a trainer or a medical staff mem member who succumbed to coronavirus, um, remembering them. Really, really, really great goal assist by Mikhail Ichenko and Ukraine is off to a great start as um, they have now. If you look in the standings, uh, they are now the first le leaders and they got themselves a pretty good chance. I mean, it's still very even, but um, they could feel reach the final four and probably put them ourselves out of the relegation trouble for now. But you know, many games still to be played and there are still lots to happen uh, there. Then we had in League B actually a full slate and Bulgaria Ireland was one, one, one of the transits even was a very late goals. And Bulgaria Ireland, I mean Ireland was large, largely a better team. But Bulgaria had their chances. There was a good counter attack early on. And then uh, a little bit uh, in the second, I mean, Ireland then had some chances themselves. And I don't not necessarily like this dark green Ireland look. Uh, but then uh, in the second half, suddenly Bulgaria got the lead with a really nicely taken uh, attacking move, uh, good through ball, uh, giving them the 1 0 lead. And it seemed like despite everything that they can hang on, but no, uh, Ireland um, got a very, very late, maybe basically the last kick of the game, uh, they got their equalizer. I think it was Shane Duffy. I'm trying to look that up now. Doesn't want to. So get a 1-1 one, one and uh, that ends that game. Uh, yes, Shane, Shane Duffy and the goal for... Um, um, Bulgaria was uh, Bojidar uh, Krajev. Really nicely taken goal, I gotta say. Wales was large, largely the better team, but Finland had one glorious chance where um, the attacker, defender, well, whatever, was, is really clear goal, has the ball, can put it in it, puts it on, on, on the post, and they were um, uh, clamoring for a penalty. penalty. Was not, not to be, but more chances for Wales, clearly and Moore gives them a late win, so that was a big win for Wales. Um, I have to say that the other one, uh, the other group, uh, uh, B4, had bigger games. I mean, Russia, Serbia, um, I expected a little bit more even. I find those Serbia jerseys a little, little bit weird with the white and the blue, and the, it doesn't look very Serbian. The red is missing to me. Uh, but you know, it ends nil nil at the half with Russia already being the better team. Then uh, Russia gets a deserved penalty. Artem Zuba uh, slots that one home. Uh, Karavayev, uh, a little bit later, 69th, makes it 2 nil. And you think, yeah, Russia is gonna roll also. No, Mitrovic puts one back in the 78th and 
just when you thought, just when you thought uh, that now Serbia could get going, uh, Maksimovic uh, slips, gives the ball to Zuba, who makes it 3-1. That was easy. Um, and then Hungary had a first half where they need to just convert their chances. The second half, Turkey better, but cannot do it. And then a wonder goal by Joboslai. Uh, makes it 1-0 late for Hung Hungary, who get a deserved win, rather surprising. And if you look now at the Group B standings, uh, League B, B standings, yeah, Russia and Hungary put themselves in really good positions. And Russia kind of really cementing with this win over Serbia that they might be the strongest team in that group for sure. Uh, in the second one, Wales gets a big away win. Uh, you know, everyone thought that Finland might be uh, good there. Uh, where Ireland and Bulgaria, yeah, we'll have to see how, how, how it goes a lot on. But Wales, that was a big away win for them. Uh, like see, Moldova and Kosovo played in Parma because of political reasons, seemingly. I think there was some coronavirus or, or whatever. Um, I found it interesting that Moldova played in blue and Kosovo in yellow, which are exactly Parma's color, so fit perfectly. Moldova took a surprise lead, but Kosovo could equalize late. We're large, 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 the better team, I have to say. But those Moldova blue jerseys are some of the best out there, I have to say. Greece dominated proceedings in Slovenia, but hey, didn't get much. Uh, didn't get, get a goal. It was a rather dreary game overall. So yeah, in that group, Everyone on one point, uh, not much hap happening. Greece still uh, the favorites to come out of that one. And then I think the game of the evening, you, you could say, was not La Latvia against Andorra, which was the first game. Uh, Latvia missing a penalty, saved by the Andorran goalkeeper. Can I say that the Andorra uh, wager is also great? Yellow with the Andorran flag. I really love this. No, Ferry Allen's egg uh, against Malta was the perfect three to win. Meaning that the lead changed twice. The ferry took um, an early lead. And you thought, yeah, they're well on, on, on the way. But then uh, Malta turns around. I think it was 1-1 one, one at the half. Turns around, makes it 2-1. Uh, early in the second half. No, 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 not even early. In the 73rd, you know, I saw the highlights. I only baby I saw the saw goals. And then very late. I mean, then Malta controlled the game. And then very late, Olsen... Um, Gets an equalizer in the 87th, you think, oh, it's 2-2, two, two. and a wonderful uh, ki um, free kick by another Olsen, B. Olsen, uh, Brandur Olsen, makes it 3-2, and that was a great uh, free, free kick, yes, makes it 3-2 for Malta, and... I know, I watched Germany, Spain, and I said this idea, so I'm gonna only watch that one, although I was Russia, Serbia was intriguing to me. Uh, I gotta be brave enough to watch some League D stuff because it's just great to see Ferry Islands and Malta play out a great game. It is fun. So let's see what Friday dished up. Well, yesterday, uh, Friday evening, were quite interesting results, I have to say. Uh, I had a hard time picking and choosing, but then in the end I went with my heart. Basically, I watched Italy against Bosnia on the main screen and then with sound, Austria at Norway and Austria, as we will see, had a very good performance. So I'm wearing the 2008 away jersey, which is similar to what they're wearing now, although there's a little bit too much turquoise in there. And you know, this is what should be an Austria shirt and not the spider that they have now. Um, but let's start with Italy against Bosnia, because that I expected to be an interesting match, but it actually turned out to be an interesting one. Uh, it was not uh, initially a great game. It was Italy having uh, control, but Bosnia always uh, having those little uh, attacks that are a little bit pesky in there and keeping Italy honest, to, uh, so to speak. I would have to say Donnarumma played in goal for uh, Italy, Milan, and uh, the last goalkeeper played a goal for Austria that I think, and this has nothing to do now with the game itself, but I think it's the first time ever that the national team goalies, uh, that my the favorite go that the goalies of my two favorite teams are actually the national team goalies. It's mostly the last game breaks down, but also Milan doesn't have that often a national team goalie. So, a uh, momentous evening uh, for this Milan and Lusk fan. And if you would see my room here, here hanging Milan and Lusk jerseys like crazy. Kind of, I need it when I work. Back to the game. Um, 
There were a few chances, I think a uh, um, free kick by Insigne in the first half and then I think Jacko always kept the Italian defense busy. I necessarily didn't like Florenzi playing out uh, all that much, but Italy had more of the game. Bosnia was attacking. I found it curious that Bosnia was still playing in their old jerseys uh, and Italy in the new one, but with dark blue pants, which is a look I did not really like for Italy. But yeah, although I don't like the dark blue accents on the current Italy shirt, I have to say Italy probably has overall, if you consider all three jerseys, and I'm not sure they will ever play in the green jersey again, uh, they have a pretty darn nice looking uh, kit with it's consistent with all the pattering. But that's for another review. We should go back to the game. The second half sprung back into life. Um, you know, so kind of 10, 15 minutes in when... Um, Hocic suddenly find, gets around taunt on the room, but then from a very acute angle, uh, tries to put the ball ball on goal, but only hits the um, post. A little bit later, after, after um nice cross in from Chiesa, Insigne hits the post. So yeah, uh, it was that even, and then after, um, I think it was a corner kick, uh, Dzeko then scores Sunic uh, with the header assist and then Dzeko uh, slots it in, 1-0 for Bosnia in the 57th minute. And now Italy, who had been running, winning 11 in a row, were asked for and they actually answered when Insigne played the ball to Sensi, who, it was not a great shot, but it took a very nice deflection and went to the net 1-1. And from that moment on, then Italy really tried to push forward, had a few chances, and the game got really lively then at the end. But um, Italy cannot find the winner. It's kind of a disappointing 1-1 draw, if you think it over. But Bosnia, again, showing the nation, again, a much different face than they showed in qualifying. So yeah, uh, big result there. Um, the other game between the Netherlands and Poland was kind of a war of attrition. Yes, Poland had a chance, but it was mostly the Netherlands, but they couldn't really break down uh, the Polish defense. Um, it was then a moment of brilliance from Frankie de Jong, who plays a nice cross out to the edge that finds Hatteboer from Atalanta, heads it, uh, plays it to the center where Bergwijn can put his first uh, national team goal in and that ended the game. I mean, the N Dutch didn't have many great chances, but they were large, largely the better team, therefore deserved a victory, 1-0. And so uh, if you look at the Group A standings now, we have Netherlands ahead of Bosnia and Italy, who are 11 points, but I give Bosnia the edge because they have the uh, away goal that Italy doesn't have yet. Uh, Poland uh, for now last, but uh, that win alone gave the uh, Dutch a huge boost um, for reaching the final four again. Let's go to League B, where uh, the other big uh, game was between Norway and Austria. And I have to say, I was so surprised to the way Austria was playing. I saw them already play like, like that in Poland last, last year, where they really pressed the opponent um, very early on. This typical Red Bull style of play, but uh, with having quite some uh, people missing, the most, most notably Arnautovic, which probably didn't worked in their favor because Arnautovic is... Uh, he's super dangerous and he was our best player for the last two, three years. Um, however, I don't think he likes this high press all that much. Um, so maybe that was, but Alaba also missing. Um, yeah, but I think the team is not that dependent on the star players uh, anymore if they keep playing like that. Hintaker was the captain, which I also found uh, interesting, but uh, he had to be substituted in the 40th minute. I yeah, seems to be something um, not quite working well uh, with his legs at the moment. I hope it's not a big in, in injury. Then um, you could see when Hinteregger went out, the defensive solidity got a little, little bit lost, although Dragovic is a capable uh, replacement. But Austria was dominating Norway. Norway didn't have any shot on goal in the first half. And um, it's, but also has, has to say, Austria didn't have any real chances. Uh, I mean, only half chance, 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 chances until, but you, uh, until they actually found the breakthrough. And I have to say, uh, what the goal? This was typically how I want Austria to play. We have so many players coming from the Red Bull School that you need to see this way, way, way more often. Uh, it was Ulmer tried to get, get across. It got cleared. The ball goes goes to the center. Uh, Schlager. 
not the last goalie, but the midfield player from Wolfsburg, presses really uh, quickly, gets the ball out to Ulm again, who can find the cross, and Gregoric, uh, who I always thought he cannot find the goal, make it the first goal uh, for Austria. A highly deserved um, lead. I thought if this would go nil-nil into halftime, this would be a very big let off for Norway. Uh, second half started si starts like similarly. Um, Austria got a rather lucky penalty. I mean, it was hand here. Uh, the referee saw it. You know, the, the player had the hand like that. Uh, I don't think he increased his silhouette of all about But let, let, let's get away from the silhouette rule. This rule needs to be definitely look at. I take it. It was a handball and Sabitzer with a very good penalty puts it home, makes it 2-0 and I th I know 2-0 is, da is dangerous, but the way you controlled Norway, this must have been the win. Well, with the first shot on goal, Erling Haaland after admittedly nice assist um, by Serloth uh, makes it 2-1. Uh, from the view of the Austrians, one, one, two, and Serloth just came on. And this is where I think if there was Hinteregger, I'm not sure if that chance would, would have happened. But yeah, uh, but any holes for Norway were quickly thwarted. I think Austria could have come right back and made it 3-1 and that uh, would have been very well deserved. They didn't, but they hang on rather. Um, I think there was not too much uh, shakiness on the back. There was one big chance. Uh, by Norway uh, around the 7th, I think Hansen, uh, or Berg, or whoever, should have made maybe the 2-2, but it would have been not deserved because Austria also really had the better chance of world, very better team hang on to a very deserved victory. Uh, in the other game of that group, uh, it was a Romania who, from the highlights that I saw, completely dominated Northern Ireland. Uh, Pushkash gets the uh, uh, goal in the, in, in, in the 25th. In the 39th, uh, McGinnis is being sent off a second time elbowing. Uh, yeah, uh, it's not smart off, off, off of the play, but it was not like an elbow like, like this. It was more like reaching in with a strong arm. And anyway, he gets sent off and everything is pointing towards Romania, who have many chances. Uh, especially Pushkash could have easily made it too. Or three and you know the chances you don't make you end up conceding and right after left of the cross uh, heads in for a 1-1. Romania still had the one to win it but nope it was not to be. Uh, in the other group for uh, League B uh, Scotland Israel played out a 1-1 draw. Um, from the highlights I saw Israel had really good chances and, and probably the better chances than uh, Scotland. Um, however, Christie with a penalty uh, gives Scotland the lead just before the half. Zahavi with a wonderful shot uh, makes it 1-1 uh, in the 73rd, which I thought was a deserved equalizer. Uh, as I said, I only saw highlights and from what I could see there, um, Israel had the better chances. But that shot by Zahavi Wow, and 14 goals in 13, the last 13 games speaks for Sahavi and maybe Israel, coached now by Willy Ruttensteiner, former Austrian uh, sporting director. Let's see where this will go. In the parallel game, this was kind of uh, from, from, from her names, probably also an interesting one, the brotherly duel between Slovakia and the Czech Republic. The Czechs playing in lime green. I know they have this one, I didn't expect them to play in lime green. Against Slovakia, you can play in red. I guess they wanted to sell more of these wonderfully ugly jerseys. I mean, uh, the color itself is, is, is all right, but it just, it's not Czech. It is not Czech to me. <laughs> uh, but maybe there are some Czech viewers who will tell me the, op the, 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 the opposite. I should go up there. Uh, it's just an hour from here and I'm in, I'm in the Czech Republic. I should ask them around. Um, the Czechs dominated the game. I mean, the first good chance was failed to Slovakia, but the Czechs really, really were a very bad team. And then uh, I took the second half. Kufal in the 48th makes it 1 0. Then a uh, penalty. Uh, yeah, Panenka uh, type of pen penalty in the 53 for Dodgegal makes it uh, 2 0. The Czechs pile on, make it even 3 0 through uh, Kremčík in the 86, but then Schranz on his debut with another really great goal. Uh, you, have to, you have to see how he takes that shot out of the air and it goes right in. 
at least some hope for Slovakia who had the better jerseys. But everything else was dominated by the Czechs who ran away 3-1 winners. And so now in uh, League C, we have Austria pulling the stamp on their group and the Czechs doing the same even more emphatically, I would uh, say, uh, than the Austrians. Although the last time Norway lost at home was to Germany in 2016. So this is a statement win for Austria, I have to uh, say, but also a statement win for the Czechs against Slovakia. So both beat the what was then considered to be the second best team in the group. So let's see how this will uh, pan out. I. When I look at, at the groups, Norway now is odds on to be relegated. I'm not so sure about that. I think um, that's between Northern Ireland and Romania. Um, Israel still not favored to go, go down because they are probably the weaker, uh, you know, just by players, the weakest team in that group. But let's see. And then we had in League C two 2 nil away wins. Uh, Kazakhstan was efficient. They got it done. Uh, there was some chance for, Li for Lithuania and Albania completely thwarted, especially in the first half Belarus. Um, I think Albania in that group should, should, should be the strongest one. I mean, Sikaleshi gets the first one and then uh, Bara the second one uh, in the 70 78th. It was really good performance by Albania. And I have to say, given the players that Albania have and where, where they play, they should be considered uh, not only favor favorite in this group, but um, Sounds a little bit like a League B team. What do we have today on menu? Uh, <laughs> the big one, Gibraltar against San, San, San Marino. I really want to watch this. I know we have a lot in League A. Uh, I think all four games are worth your time. I will have a hard time choosing between Denmark, Belgium, Portugal, Croatia, Sweden, France. One I need to leave out and I don't know which one yet. Uh, I really want to watch Gibraltar, San San Marino, I don't know, I'm probably Iceland, England. Let's see how it, how it goes. Speak of Gibraltar, San Marino, I owe you the tables for League D. The Faroe Islands lead their group after the great victory. Uh, Latvia and Andorra are level on points. And yeah, we'll see Gibraltar, Liechtenstein, San San Marino will be played today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I want to see your comments below what you thought about the Nations League games. It, really seems mostly so that uh, teams still need to find themselves. I think um, from the teams that I saw, I thought Austria had the most complete performance. Uh, but yeah, then I saw only six uh, teams live. I also thought that um, the Czechs, from what I could tell, looked really good. Probably even the Russians uh, were surprisingly good. So we have to see how it continues and of course I was very impressed by the Fairy Islands. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos on the Nations League and anything else, especially with jerseys and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also consider subscribing to my channel to keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Bye!